Today, tax take diamonds in the rough. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, the Australian Bureau of Statistics has released their taxation revenue analysis to the year 2017-18. And this actually contains a lot of really insightful and useful information. But there were a couple of things that really stood out. So I want to look at those in a bit more detail. But by way of context, the data breaks down the total taxation revenue by the level of government and by category. So it includes the Commonwealth revenue, the state revenue, the local government revenue, and a sum up to all levels of government. And it's worth noting that the Commonwealth has the lion's share at 427 billion, that state governments have 84 billion, that local governments have around 18 billion, and the total taxation revenue is $528 billion. And that went up from $486 billion last year. So with that introduction, now let's look at two things in more detail. Firstly, the question of revenue from property sale stamp duty, which of course is a state level thing, and overall income tax from both individuals and from corporations, which is a Commonwealth government thing. So firstly, let's look at personal and company tax. And this first series shows the relative proportion of income tax drawn from personal sources, in other words, from households, and comparing that with the proportion from the company sector. And you can see that back in 2008-9, it stood at around 64% personal and the rest from the corporate sector. And you can also see that over the last few years that has risen. In fact, 73% came from individuals. Now, since then, it's reversed slightly to around 69%. And that's partly because of some tax increases for some businesses and also some changes to the personal income bands. But a lot of the increase simply relates to what's called bracket creep. And we can look at the trends. This is the personal income tax trend from 2008 to 2018. And you can see the very steady rise in dollar terms to just below $200 billion in 2017-18. And this is the company tax line. And you can see that between 2010 and 2015, there was no increase in company taxation in real terms. And of course, if you apply inflation over the top of that, it means that actually income tax paid by companies went down. But from its lows in 2015-16, it lifted a little and is now sitting just a little higher in 2017-18. But remember, of course, that whilst personal incomes have been flat and static in real terms since 2012-13, corporate profits have actually been doing quite well. Now, I think this puts the question of the relative balance between income tax from personal sources, households, and companies in a whole new light. And clearly, there is a mismatch. And as a result of that, there should be, I think, a greater focus on corporation tax going forward. But that is, of course, politically quite difficult. Now, the other area I want to investigate today is the tax take from stamp duty relating to property transactions. And that information is actually broken down to a state level. So we're going to look at the trends by state since 2008-9. And we start with New South Wales. And we can see there back in 2008-9, the total 
share of state revenue from stamp duties on conveyances was sitting at around 13%. And it rose consistently right up to 2016-17, where more than a quarter of revenue from the state in New South Wales came from stamp duty conveyances, and it fell back to 24.3% this last year. And of course, we expect to see that falling considerably over the next 12 months or so, because the sheer volume of transactions is so much lower. Now, Victoria had a somewhat similar trace, although interestingly, it started at a higher level, when about 18% of revenue came from stamp duties on conveyancing back in 2008-9. And it's now risen to a peak of more than 25.5% this last year. Now, of course, in Victoria, we're seeing a considerable turnaround in the market now. So the expectation must be that the revenue from stamp duties will ease going forwards. And we can then look at the other states with Queensland never really quite sitting as high as Victoria, New South Wales and recording a fall over the last 12 months. South Australia is also showing a bit of a decline from a lower level as is Western Australia. Of course, Western Australia has seen declines all the way from 2013 and 14 onwards, and it's been one of the pressures on their budget. Whereas Tasmania has seen a bit of a lift, thanks to the transaction throughput down there. But it still remains well below the Victoria and New South Wales benchmarks. Now, the Northern Territories was a bit all over the place. At one year back in 2014-15, more than 30% of its revenues came from stamp duties on convincing, whereas now it's down to 10%. And that's one of the reasons why the Northern Territory budgets are in such a mess. We see that in the ACT, there was also a drop this last year. And so on average across all states, we can see that the total share of revenue from stamp duties on conveyancing is just around 22% and is on the slide. So this chart shows you the breakdown by state and year on year of the amount of revenue taken from stamp duty relating to conveyancing. And New South Wales leads the way at $8.6 billion in 2017-18. Victoria at $7.1 billion, Queensland at just over $3 billion, Western Australia at $1.4 billion, South Australia at $814 million, Tasmania at $255 million, the ACT at $225 million, and the Northern Territories at $74 million, and the total revenue take in 2017-18 across all states was $21.7 billion. So these declines will put tremendous pressure on the state budgets. And many states, I think, will be forced to hunker down and cancel spending programs because of the falls in stamp duty revenue. Unless, of course, they decide to try and stimulate the market further and encourage more people to buy into the falling markets. But as we discussed previously, that's an extremely risky scenario. So just to summarise then, I think it's important to understand that from a state perspective, revenues are under threat simply because of the fall in housing transactions, and that is likely to continue for some time. And at a federal level, the share of tax take from households and individuals is considerably higher than previously. And it looks to me as though the corporate sector is getting off the hook rather lightly. Now, some of that may be simply because of poor policy, but it also could be tax avoidance as well. So I think that's an area of focus to try and return more of corporate tax back to the Australian coffers. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.